council members and came down the city uh uh, everybody, the whole city, uh, everybody's been uh, supportive. So do you mind me asking where exactly you were that night that the shooting happened? Well, I had just, I was talking to Nipsey uh, from the time he got to that parking lot. I was, I was out there talking to him. I had just got my food and uh, I left to the break room to put my food down for a, a, a short minute amount of time. And, uh, and that's when the guy came up and shot him. So when you came back, Nipsey was, he was on the ground and the guy was uh, breaking up out of there. Wow. You know, so I ran straight to Nipsey and uh and, uh, and held him, make sure he was breathing. Uh, he was still breathing. Uh, he had a, a bullet hole right here. I kept my hand in that right there. He had one right here. Uh, he was fighting. He he fought. He fought. You know, you can see he was fighting. He, he wasn't trying to go nowhere. He was fighting. He fought the whole way up until the ambulance came and got him. He fought. He's a fighter. And what were you telling him in the, in those moments that you were holding him and, and making sure he was there? Uh, I was basically just praying, 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 and uh. Uh, if his eyes start to roll back a little bit, I say, well, Nip, wake up. And he just kind of snapped back out of it. Like, he was kind of losing consciousness and coming back. So I say he was fighting. He's constantly fighting for it. So I just prayed and I shaking him, shaking him and, uh, telling him, you know, uh, uh, wake up, stay up, stay up. So, uh, uh, he was fighting. Yeah. Was fighting. Uh, Cowboy, you, uh, you said that you were there talking to Nipsey. So obviously you guys had some kind of relationship prior, prior to what, tell me about the impact that Nipsey had on your life and in your relationship with Nipsey. Uh, well, you know, Nipsey, Nipsey, uh, he was a friend, you know, and then at times he was like a dad. He'd give me advice. Uh, you know, I would give him advice, you know, uh, with us, the whole team, everybody's equal. It was no, it was no big me, little you, uh, everybody on the team from the smallest job. I don't care what you did for the team. You got treated each, uh, Nipsey treated everybody equal. I didn't care what you did. If he was a bum on the street, he didn't care. He would give you his time. You know, uh, if he was working, he would do his work, but, uh, if he had time, and he, he would give it to anybody. I know that Nipsey obviously spent a lot of time over at Marathon, and certainly in that square at Crenshaw and Slauson. Is that a place you call home as well? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, every morning we meet up, and uh, we do shift change. We drink, uh, he would drink his tea. Uh, he drank the green tea. And, uh, you know, I gave up cigarettes this year. I gave up coffee. Uh, so uh, I started drinking tea. So every morning we'd drink our tea or whatever, and uh, he'd go to the studio, and I'd start work. You know, so many of us only know him as this artist, you know, or a community activist. You obviously have a very personal connection to him. What's one thing we'd be surprised to know about Nip, the the, the human, the your friend? Uh, I mean, this he he was just down to earth. Uh, you know, uh, you know, just his sense of humor. You know what I mean? The way he had fun. You know, they had water fights.